Namaste, and welcome to the 20th episode of Uladu Narpadu. Today we're going to look into something very interesting and something we've been actually working toward for a few verses here, which is the nature of God. Uh, everybody talks about God, but nobody does anything about it. <laughs> so, what really is God, and how can we experience or realize God, is discussed in this verse. Oneself, seeing God, without seeing oneself, the ego, who sees what comes in front of one is merely seeing a mental vision, a manasika darshanam, or imaginary appearance. He who, through the inquiry, who am I, sees the real self, the source of the individual self, alone is he who has truly seen God, because the real self which shines forth after the base, the individual self or ego has perished, is not other than God. So what do we mean by God? Well, there are various definitions. The source of everything, the creator, the sum total of all existence, the controller, Ishwara, uh, the Supreme Personality. <laughs> I mean, there are many, many definitions. Brahman, the root substance of everything. Uh, the unlimited, the one without a second, and so on and so on. Many, many definitions. But those definitions are just words. What do we really mean by God? Well, according to Ramana, and according to my experience also. What we really mean by God is what is left over after all conditioning is removed. After we go beyond all limitations and take off all masks that hide the reality, then what is left is God. So in the comments on this verse, Sri Sadhu Om mentions verse 25 of Upadesha Undiyar. So let's go back and take a look at that. Knowing oneself, having given up one's own adjuncts, upadis, is directly knowing God because he shines as oneself, as one's own reality. I am. And let me read the commentary too. Knowing this I am, which is one's own real self, without adjuncts, upadis, is itself knowing God. That which exists and shines in one as I am is the true nature of God. And it is only one's own adjunct knowledge, upadi unarvu, that veils one's knowledge of this I am. So now we have to look at what is upadi. Well, the meaning of upadi in Vedanta is a limiting adjunct. An adjunct is something that's next to something else, or an attachment, or a subordinate part of something. The uh, Sanskrit definition is, by staying near something, it transfers its property to something else. And the example is given of a crystal, a transparent crystal, which is kept on a blue cloth, takes on the appearance of being blue. So this is the principle of association. Huh? By positioning 
or association with something that has a definite quality. That which lacks that quality, such as the transparent crystal, takes it up and appears blue. So the example is given in, uh, by Adi Shankaracharya in his book Atma Bodh. It's important to know the nature of upadi to get free from it because all our sufferings are caused by it. Shankaracharya goes on to say, because of its association with different conditionings, upadis, the idea of caste, color, position, and so on, are superimposed upon the atma, just as flavor, color, and so on are superimposed on water. And here we have a nice diagram illustrating this. Water in its native state is pure and clear, but when it becomes associated with other things such as tea, mud, the riverbed, clay, garbage, foods, and sunlight, it acquires qualities based on those associations. So you see what we're getting at here? Similarly, the pure self, with a capital S, becomes associated with the body and the mind in relation with it, and takes on their qualities, reflects them, or absorbs them, like the water, uh, or like the crystal on the colored cloth. And in that way, it loses its own original nature, or rather, that original nature becomes covered by something else. The crystal is still transparent, but now it has adopted this blue color by being next to the cloth. The water is still clear, and yet it acquires so many different qualities by association with different things. The air, for example, or space, even better example has no qualities at all. Space is simply empty, but yet it gets filled with so many things, air, dust, smoke, uh, airplanes, <laughs> clouds. Sometimes the sky may appear pure and empty. At other times it may be filled with clouds, rain, lightning, wind, so many things. Uh, but yet, after that all passes, the sky remains in its original condition. So the same thing is true of the self. The self, in its native state, has no qualities at all, except unconditioned, non-dual, objectless awareness. That is also bliss, by the way. <laughs> But when the self, through association, becomes covered by different qualities, such as what Shankara mentioned, race, caste, nationality, family designations, this, that, the other thing, then it becomes subject to those conditionings. And because it is limited by those conditionings, then it appears to be of a similar nature to the coverings. This is upadi. So upadi is indeed the cause or source of all our suffering. Would we, for example, suffer if we didn't accept this body as a covering? Or if we didn't accept the mind that says, I am the ego, I am a person, I am a man, I am this, I am that, so many things. All those are conditions that lead to suffering. Because if one, for example, accepts the body as the self, well, the body is going to get old and sick and die. That's suffering. And that suffering is born along with the birth of the body or even previous to that, with the acceptance of the body as the self. 
Therefore, the process of self-realization involves one by one throwing off these coverings, uh, becoming free from these conditions, these upadis, these limiting adjuncts. And when one is completely free, then the self shines forth in its natural glory, in its original condition. Uh, and as I said before, its original condition is unlimited, non-dual, which means not divided, with no boundaries, with no edges, uh, with no limitations whatsoever, just a solid, unlimited chunk of pure awareness with no object except itself, from which comes the expression, I, I. So with self, with a capital S, we don't even have to say, I am, because am implies that, huh? I am that. But we don't even have to say am, we can just say I, I. <laughs> I, 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 because there is no object to become or be. It is only subjective. And this subjective awareness is the root cause of everything. When we go to sleep at night, the whole world disappears. Try it. When you're going to sleep at night or when you wake up in the morning, there is a moment, there is a time between sleep and waking. If you go towards sleep, dreams begin. If you go towards waking, thoughts of the body and the mind begin. And from that vantage point, exactly between sleep and waking, you can very easily see that the quality of the dreams of sleeping and the quality of the dreams of the body and mind are not different. They're both just dreams. They're both just thoughts. They're not realities. They're visions. So this is real yoga. This is real self-realization to stand in the middle between sleep and waking and drop all dreams and simply be the substrate, the original source, which is God. In other words, God is not something separate from ourselves. The source of everything, the substrate, the root from which everything comes is the self. Not some, but the other self, our self. But because of these limiting adjuncts, we think, oh, I am not enlightened. Oh, I have to do so much sadhana. Oh, I have to purify this and transform that and acquire something else and blah, blah, blah. This is all part of the illusion. Actually, everyone is fully enlightened at every moment. But because we accept these conditionings, these adjuncts, these upadi, uh, because we position ourselves in association with them, then we start to believe all these false things. I am this, I am that, I am not enlightened, blah, de, blah, de, blah. So just like the existence of the body as self, or the mind as self is simply an assumption that we make because it's not true. Similarly, self-enlightenment, self-realization, God-realization is simply an assumption that we make. I am the non-dual root substance of the entire universe. After all, the entire universe shows up in my consciousness so why not? You find if you make that assumption that you are instantly enlightened 
and have realized God. Oh, that's it. <laughs> oh, Hari Om. Oh.